Hi kids, my name is Tina, and I am Brain Food's resident expert in terminology. The vocabulary word for this episode is abet. Abet is a verb that means to encourage or assist someone in doing something wrong. Stay tuned to find out how you can use the word abet in a sentence. Hey guys, I'm at a super cool skate park here in Lakeland with my friend Alex, who is a master skateboarder. Today, I'm trying to learn some tips for how to stay safe and have fun on a board. Hey Alex, you're so good at skateboarding. How long have you been doing this? Um, since I was like two or three. Wow, that's insane. And it runs in the family. I heard your brother started skateboarding before he could even walk. Yeah. You guys get to do so many fun things because of skateboarding. What's it like to be in a skateboard family? It's awesome. We get to travel the state, leave the state. I mean, it's really cool to explore new places and skate new skate parks. And it must be nice to have a great skate park like this right here in Lakeland where you can come and practice. How often do you guys come here? Every day. Every day? How much time would I have to spend here every day to get as good as you? Probably about... All week nights I'll stay for about an hour and a half to two hours and on school nights or on weekends I'll stay for a really long time, like three or four hours. So what does it take to get started? What should I do first? Just buy a skateboard. It doesn't matter where you get it. It's just you got to start by just getting a skateboard. Now, when I start skateboarding, I really don't want to get hurt. What other gear should I get to protect myself? I recommend mostly a helmet, but if you want to take it seriously and you want to do it for a career, get pads. Not even a career, you could just do it for fun. And you don't want to get hurt, get pads. When I was watching you skateboard, I saw that you could tell when you weren't going to land a trick. What do you do when you know you're going to fall? When I know I'm not going to make it, I just push my board out and go to my knees. Does that technique have a name? Knee sliding. I saw you performing a lot of different tricks out here on the ramps and rails. What types of tricks do you normally do? Airs. I'll do street tricks like rails, and stairs, grinds, a lot of stuff that whatever, just kind of whatever is here and out of skate park. So if I start skating, what kind of trick should I learn first? Uh, an ollie, a 180, and how to drop in. Can you show me how to do an ollie? An ollie is when you just pop your back foot and slide your front foot and the board comes off the ground like that. That's awesome. That's that looks hard though. That's one of the first things you learn? Yeah. But it, took, it wasn't easy, it took me a long time to do. It must take a lot of practice to get good. Yeah, take, it takes a lot of practice, but once you do it for a long time, you'll get really good. It seems like skateboarding is a sport that anyone can try. You just have to work hard and practice every day until you know what you're doing. Yeah, it doesn't matter gender, race, Anything you could skateboard, doesn't matter. That's great, I'm excited to try it myself then. But until then, I would love to see you skate some more. Thanks for your tips, Alex, be safe out there. Okay, and thank you.
everybody, I'm Ariana and I'm here at Exploration's Five Children's Museum for this segment of Senses Overdrive. This is Sue. She's going to be helping us with our activity today. So Sue, what are we doing? All right, Ariana, we are going to make something called a flip stick today. Cool. It has to do with optical illusions, which means that your eyes are looking at something, but your brain is interpreting it a little bit differently. Okay. okay? So if you look at this right here, tell me what you see. A rocket. A rocket. And on the other side, you see a... Air. Air, or the... the gust of wind. Gust of wind that's pushing the rocket through the air. So if we look at it either side, it doesn't make a whole picture. But if you no. put it between your hands like this, and then rub it back and forth and look at it, what do you see? A rocket flying. All right, you see the rocket flying because your eye is remembering what it saw on one side while you're looking at the other side. Your, your eyes and your brain work together and your brain retains that image for just a little bit. So we're so gonna go cool. ahead, I've got lots of different samples here. I've got a guy that will probably, what do you think will happen to him? He'll probably go inside the TV. He'll go inside the TV. I always wanted to do that. All right, let's put the guy in the TV then. Okay. So you can color it if you want to, or we can leave it black and white. I'm gonna leave it black and white. Okay, so we've got it folded there, then open it up, grab a pencil, and we're gonna put the eraser side up down to be safe. And then tape that right there in the middle of the thing. Thank you. And get it in there very tight. All right, and then we're just gonna fold it shut and staple it on the outside edges there. Cool. <laughs> All Great. right, now see if it works. See if you can get him on TV. Is he on there? Yes, he is. He's on it. He shows up in there. And each one's a little bit Ooh. different depending on what it is that uh, you start with. But you're looking at two different images and your eye is remembering, as it sends it to the brain, it's remembering that for just a fraction of a second while you're seeing that new picture. Thanks, that was so much fun. I'm glad that you enjoyed it. Remember, your eyes and your brain are connected. Thanks. If you really want to put your senses into overdrive, then come here to Exploration's Five Children's Museum in downtown Lakeland. I'm Ariana. See you again soon. Today's vocabulary term is a bet. For example, Lauren's sister was there to aid and abet when she stole cookies from her mother's jar. Let's talk about the perimeter and area of shapes. So why would you need to know what the perimeter of a shape is? Well, we know that everything around you is made up of shapes. There's a shape here, there's a shape there, there's shapes everywhere. So you might wanna figure out what the distance around that shape is. Let's say you wanted to go out and get some exercise by walking around your house. Well, in order to find out how far you're walking, we would need to figure out what the perimeter of your house is. So let's say your house is this rectangle right here. And it's 20 feet long on one side and 40 feet long right here on this side and 20 feet here and 40 feet here. All right, so let's call this side A, side B, side C, and side D. In order to figure out what the perimeter is, we're gonna need to add all of the sides together. We get the sum of all the sides. So our perimeter equation would look like this. Perimeter equals A plus B plus C plus D or in this case, 20 plus 40 plus 20 plus 40, which will give us 120 feet. So every time you walk around the house, you're walking a little bit more than 120 feet. This works for all kinds of shapes with straight sides. All you need to know is the length of each side and you can find the perimeter. Let's say instead of a rectangle, you have a triangle. If you know the length of all three sides of the triangle, you can simply add them together, just like we did with your house. If you don't know all the sides of the triangle, then we'll have to do a little bit more math before we can figure out the perimeter. We'll talk about that later when we take a closer look at triangles. Okay, so that's fine for finding the perimeter, but what if you wanted to find out how much space you have in your bedroom? We figure this out by finding the area of the shape. So here's your bedroom. It measures 10 feet on one side and 8 feet on the other side. And side AB is equal to side DC and side BC is equal to side AD. And the whole thing is a perfect square with 90 degree right angles. Make it easy. 
To find out the area of your room, we'll multiply side AB with side BC. So that will be area equals 10 by 8, which is 80 feet. And because we're finding the area, and it's a two-dimensional figure, we write that as feet squared, or square feet. Go ahead and practice this a little bit. Take a ruler around your house and measure some common items like boxes and paper. See if you can figure out the perimeter and the area of the shape. Welcome, lovers of fine literature, to story time. Today we're going to be reading <coughs> Franklin the Frog's Gnarly Ride. <clears throat> As a general rule, frogs are not the most adventurous creatures. Now, lizards and mice tend to be open to new experiences. The average rabbit can best be described as an excitement machine, but frogs are very calm creatures. That's what made Franklin so very different from your average Polk County frog. No, that's not quite right. Franklin was an average frog until a skate park was built next to his pond. It was the skate park that changed everything. When the park opened, Franklin was no longer happy to just hang around the pond every day. Now every morning began with a quick swim, a few flies, and then a hop straight over to the skate park. Each day, Franklin watched camel flips, gazelle spins, and seatbelt grabs. He could just tell by the way someone popped an ollie whether they were good skateboarders or not. Franklin spent hours every day watching, learning, and dreaming that one day he too would miller flip down one of the ramps. Life wasn't too bad. Then Franklin met Daphne, and life got a whole lot better. Daphne showed up one day with a plain blue dime board. Nothing flashy, just a sweet ride. She arrived in the morning, sat down, watched the others skate for several hours, and then she left. Why bring a board if you weren't going to skate? Franklin had to wait another hour for this question to be answered. When the sun was directly overhead and the boys left to get some lunch, the girl came back. She walked slowly to the beginning of the course, checked briefly to make sure that no one was watching, stepped on her board and popped the sweetest Ollie Franklin had ever seen. Hello. Franklin hopped up to the highest section of the biggest ramp and watched as the girl worked her way through her first session. Unbelievable. Every flip, every twist, every turn was perfect. Watching the way she rode and how she was taking it easy and enjoying the ride. What he wouldn't give to... Wait a minute. He hopped. There was no one else around. He hopped again. Maybe she wouldn't even notice. And then Franklin hopped like mad. He hopped faster and faster until he, he'd never hopped before, trying to... Now look, do you want to know how this ends? Enough nonsense then. Franklin flattened himself in the grass and she walked towards him. What was he thinking? This would never work. She'd see him and then, being a girl, she'd probably scream and fling the board off into the grass, hoping to dislodge him. He sighed. Why couldn't he just be happy sitting by the pond like other frogs? He watched as she checked her trucks before setting the board down for her next ride. It's now or never, dude, he muttered to himself, taking a deep breath and jumping onto the board between the girl's feet. The girl took her back foot off the board to push off, saw the frog between her feet and jumped off the board. Franklin held his breath. This was it. Well, at least he'd taken a chance. The girl shook the board and Franklin held on tight. Ha, huh, said the girl, staring at the frog. Franklin the frog stared back. She frowned slightly and then with one hand pushed the board so that it rolled slightly forward. This is it, thought Franklin. This is my one and only chance. And with that, the frog jumped into the air, rolled twice and landed back on the board, giving the ground a big push off with his leg. He didn't get very far, but he turned around to face her as the board rolled to a stop. Other than raising her eyebrows, the girl just stared at the frog. Finally, she cleared her, th her throat and spoke softly 
Have you ever ridden a board before? Franklin shook his head slowly. The girl's eyes grew wider. She checked briefly to make sure that they were still alone. Do you want to ride with me? The frog nodded vigorously. The girl shrugged, got back on the board again and pushed off gently. They weren't going very fast. She basically just cruised with the little frog between her feet. Franklin was shaking with frustration. Don't. This may be the only opportunity he would ever have to ride a skateboard and she was going easy on him. Well, forget that. Franklin dove forward, landed on his front legs and threw his back legs up in the air. The girl saw his trick, made a loud whooping noise and took off like a rocket for the double vertical walls. Franklin quickly went back to all fours and smiled as the wind buffeted his little face. Yes. The board sped up to the 90 degree vert and hung on the edge for a moment before plummeting back down and rolling towards the opposite ramp. That's more like it, thought Franklin, as he stood up on his back legs. As they hurtled up to the next wall, the girl yelled, backspin, and the girl and the frog and the board rotated along the vertical wall. Awesome, thought Franklin, this is totally awesome. The board raced down the second wall and the girl steered towards the railing. Rail slide, she yelled, and the board leapt into the air and slid along the railing. The little frog could feel his tongue flapping against his cheek, but he didn't care. This was the best day of his life. <laughs> Oh, when they finished their session through the park, the girl stopped the board and sat down on the grass. Franklin joined her, out of breath and extremely happy. That was a sick ride, little dude, said the girl with a lopsided grin. Franklin nodded, frankly still trying to catch his breath. The girl turned her head when she heard the boys returning to the park. I got a bolt, she said, picking up her board. Franklin nodded. No, he didn't nod. Yes, he nodded. Franklin nodded and looked up to her. He wished he could say thank you. He wished he could give her a hug and tell her how much the ride had meant to him. My name's Daphne, she said softly as she leaned over to pick up her board. I'll be here same time tomorrow if you want to go again. Franklin nodded and she smiled at him as she turned to leave. He was still nodding as she walked away. You bet I do, he said, and then took a hop back towards his pond. I'll be there. Well, that wasn't so bad. Join us again for the next episode when we'll read, well, something else. Hey everybody, my name's Dion and today we're gonna have some fun with our fitness. We're gonna be kicking, jumping and screaming, so let's get started. What we need to do first is make sure that we have plenty of space around us to move. So let's spread our arms out wide and rotate them in a circle, making sure that we're not touching anyone, hitting a friend, or knocking over mom's lamp because she would be quite upset with you. <laughs> all right, now let's do a couple of jumping jacks to warm up because we don't want to hurt ourselves, all right? Let's go, we're gonna do 10 of them, all right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. All right, now we're gonna get ready to punch. Now remember kids, Punching is only for exercise. Let's get them. First, we're gonna punch using our left hand. So take a stance like this with your left foot in front of your right foot. Put both hands up. And we're gonna start in five, four, three, two, one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, that's 10. So we're gonna do the opposite side now. Stand just like me with your right foot in front of your left foot. Put both hands up and we're gonna jab with our right hand. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Awesome job, guys. Now we're gonna combine the left and the right jab. So we're gonna stand with our left foot in front of our right foot once again with both hands up. And we're gonna do left, right, left. One, two, three, four. Left, right, left, one. Left, right, left, that's two. Three, that's four. Left, right, left, five. Left, right, left, six. That's seven. And eight, that's nine. One more, and that's 10. You guys are really kicking butt out there. Now let's do the other side. Right foot in front of our left foot. We're gonna do a right jab, then a left jab, then your right again. All right, so get in your stance. We're gonna start, five, four, three, two, one. Let's go. 
right, left, right, one, right, left, right, that's two, that's three, and that's four, five, right, left, right, right, left, right, right, left, right, that's eight, nine, and that is the last one. So now we're done punching, we're gonna start doing some kicks, all right? So what we're gonna start off doing is some kicks to the front. We're gonna bring our left leg up to our chest and we're gonna kick straight out in front of us like that. Then we're gonna do the same with our right knee. So bring that up to your chest, kick straight out. And then we're gonna alternate those. So alternate left, then right kick 10 times, all right? Three, two, one, and kick, kick, kick. That's two, three, four, five, Six, seven, eight, nine, and this is 10. So now we've saved the best one for last. We're gonna try and do some high kicks. Stand with your left foot in front of your right foot just like this, and with both hands up. You're gonna pull your left leg right to your chest, and then kick to the side as high as you can. But don't hurt yourself, okay? Let's try it. We're gonna do 10 on the left leg. Two. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and that is 10. So we wanna to switch to the other side, right foot in front of your left foot, just like that at that same pace. We're gonna pull your right knee up and kick to the side. Do that 10 times, all right? Kick, two, three, Four, five, six, you're over halfway there. Seven, eight, nine, and that is 10. You guys are amazing at home. And if you wanna do more fun workouts with me, make sure you tune in next month for another episode of Brain Food. Remember me? My term of the day is a bet, which means to encourage or assist someone in doing something wrong. For example, Mark was charged with aiding and abetting the burglar because he drove the getaway car. Hey guys, I'm Bo, and today I'm going to share a simple snack with you. The snack we're making is super quick and easy. It's called Bumps on a Log. Our ingredients for today are a banana, peanut butter, and blueberries. You'll also want to have a knife with you. We're going to start off with our banana. Let's peel the skin like this. So once we've peeled the banana, slice it down the middle to the bottom. Don't worry about making it perfect because we're going to eat it anyway. Okay guys, now that we have the beginning of our logs, it's time to get our peanut butter. I'm taking the peanut butter on my knife and spreading it in our bananas, like so. It's okay if you use your fingers, because, but just make sure that you have something to wipe them off with. These are starting to look more like logs now, right? So I think we're on the right track. Lastly, we're going to take our blueberries, right here, and put them on our log. You can also put raisins or even chocolate chips if, on your logs if you want. Now we're all finished, and look what we have here. A pair of yummy bumps on a log. Let's take a bite right now. Mmm. That was really yummy. That's all the time we have today, guys. Tune in next time to learn how we make another simple snack. Hola, amigos. Bienvenidos a Hablemos Español con Mima. Yo soy Mima. Yo me llamo Mima y este es mi amiga. Este es mi el búho. El búho se llama Carly. Carly el búho es muy inteligente. Carly habla dos idiomas. Carly, ¿tú hablas dos idiomas? Sí. ¿Qué idiomas hablas? Yo hablo español y yo hablo inglés. I speak Spanish and I speak English. Oh, Carly es muy inteligente. ¿Y tú? ¿Tú cómo te llamas? Yo me llamo Antonio. Antonio, qué nombre más bonito. Me gusta Antonio. Antonio, 
Te presento a Carly. Hola, Antonio. Hola, Carly. Carly nos va a enseñar español. Carly, ¿cómo se dice good morning en español? Buenos días. Correcto, Carly. Buenos días. ¿Y cómo se dice good afternoon? Buenas tardes. Correcto, Carly. Antonio, ¿cómo se dice good morning? Buenos días. Correcto, Antonio. Se dice buenos días. Y Antonio, ¿cómo se dice good afternoon? Buenas tardes. Correcto. Tú eres muy inteligente. Muy inteligente, Carly. ¿Él es inteligente? Sí, Antonio es muy inteligente. Muy bien. And Carly, ¿cómo se dice good evening and good night? Se dice buenas noches. Muy bien. Antonio, ¿cómo se dice good evening and good night? Se dice buenas noches. Muy bien. Muy inteligente, Antonio. Tú eres muy inteligente. Antonio, ¿cómo se llama el búho? Hmm. ¿Se llama Carly? Sí, se llama Carly. Ahora vamos a practicar. Buenos días. Repeat with me. Buenos días. Buenos, Buenos días. días. ¿Cómo estás? ¿Cómo, ¿Cómo estás? estás? Yo me llamo... Let's say Mima, ¿ok? Yo me llamo Mima. ¿Cómo te llamas tú? ¡Ja! Buenos días, buenos días. Yo me llamo Carly. ¿Cómo te llamas tú? Buenos días, buenos días. Me llamo Antonio. ¿Cómo te llamas tú? ¡Ja! ¡Ah, muy bien. Yo me llamo Mima. Tú te llamas Antonio. Se llama Carly. Ah, muy bien. Vamos a cantar. ¿Ok? Ahora vamos a cantar una canción muy fácil. Buenos días, buenos días. ¿Cómo estás? ¿Cómo estás? Muy bien, gracias. Buenas noches, ¿cómo estás? ¿Cómo estás? Muy bien, gracias, muy bien, gracias. Adiós, adiós. ¡Yay! Muy bien, Antonio, muy bien, Carly. Muchas gracias por estar en el programa y recuerden, ser bilingüe vale por dos. Carly. Being bilingual doubles your value.